If I could have chosen, I think I'd be a fish. A large fish. With no enemies. Happy and free to spend all day swimming amongst the reeds and rushes. I could have gills and not this clogged up nose. Ooh, or bright, pearly scales like silver instead of this awful pale skin. Mum says not to worry. I'm already halfway there because my mouth's always hanging open like a dead frog's. The joke's on her, though. Frogs are amphibians, not fish. She did also say that my glasses make my eyes bulge like a haddock's, which is fair enough, I guess. They are fish. I think she regretted saying that to me. She regrets a lot of the stuff she says to me, but she doesn't always apologise. Actually, she never apologises. Anyway, I've got a bit of an obsession with fish at the moment. I've already worked my way through shells, coins, stamps and flags. So, of course, fish were next. Honestly, fish have been the most rewarding catalogue so far. They've got so many interesting Latin names. Look, here. Pomacanthus imperator. That's the emperor anglefish. And this one, Xander's cornutus. That's a Moorish idol. My favourite has to be this one, though. Jordanella floridae. Oh. Don't you think that'd be a great name for a girlfriend when I get one? Oh, yes. And may I introduce Miss Jordanella floridae? Right. What you got there? Weren't you listening? My book of fish. I'm learning more names. Right. Sorry. What are you looking at right now? Siluriform. Their habitats and stuff. It's really cool. Oh, so catfish. How did you know there were catfish? Well, I like cats. I like fish. Mostly the cat bit, though. Ironic, because cats normally don't like water. Plus, I know my Latin's a little bit rusty, but I remember a thing or two. You know Latin? Hey. Latin is very old. Almost as old as me. Yeah, right. <laughs> Go on, where do they live? Well, it says... Extant catfish species live inland or in coastal waters of every continent except Antarctica. They are most common in tropical South America, Asia and Africa. Like the Nile? Well, yes, I suppose like the Nile. That is in Africa, after all. Egypt. Hmm? The Nile is famously in Egypt. Yes, it is. Do you know much about ancient Egypt? A little. I prefer the Greek gods, honestly. The Egyptians had their own gods too. They had a god for everything. The river, underworld, life, the sun. The sun? Yeah. The Egyptian god was called Ra. Ra? So what did he do? The story goes that it was Ra's job to bring light to the world. He'd put the sun in his boat and carry it across the sky, and this created the day. And then, when he sailed beyond the horizon into the underworld, this created the night. Oh. Like how Helio always carries the sun in his chariot across the sky. Well, yes, but Ra did it first. So does he still do it today? I guess he'd have to. Well, if you had to do the same job day in, day out, pun intended, do you not think that you'd get a little bored? No, Ra got tired one day. He realised he could just put the sun in his boat and let the tides carry it across the sky and through the underworld. But wouldn't that make the days and nights really unpredictable? Like if the moon pulled the sun like it does the tides, wouldn't we burn and freeze constantly? Well, how else do you explain the seasons except tides of the sun? Is that really how it happened? I like to think so. So where do you think Ra is now? Well, seeing as though he got tired of carrying the sun for all those years, I reckon he's gone to the one place in the whole world that never sees the light of day. Whoa. Where's that? Scotland. <laughs> oh. And here I was thinking you were being serious. What if I was being serious, Eddie? 
What if what I told you was the truth, every single word of it? What if I told you that, in fact, I am Ra? Yeah, and I'm the son of Poseidon. Another parent's evening. Surely having all those teachers looking at me wondering how old I was when I had Eddie once a year is enough. Judging me. If we could afford to live somewhere nicer, send Eddie to a good school, his life would be different. Eddie's developing quite a personality. What does that mean? But he's pleasant enough. How charming. And then she turns to me and says, are you all right, all patronising, cocking her head to one side as if I was one of the kids? I felt about six years old. One minute they're a bump, and the next minute they're huge teenagers, and then they're gone. <laughs> Yeah, right, I can't even imagine Eddie leaving home, let alone another on the way. Oh, please, believe me, I've had enough disappointed looks to last me a lifetime. Having Eddie at 18? What a big, oh, June, that was from my mother. She was 42 when she had me. I fully expect to be dead by the time I'm 42. June. Who calls their child by the month that they're born? If I'd been born in November, would they have called me November? <laughs> June's an eighth woman who knit with synthetic wool and make recipes using cornflakes. Oh, June. Right. There you go. Hmm? Thank you. No worries. Nothing a good old brew won't fix. Well, it's a start. What's bugging you today? What isn't? Eddie done something? Yes. Well, no. But that's the point. Don't you think he's a little too, I don't know, content? Like he doesn't have a drive. He's a kid, he'll figure something out. People say that, but surely he'd figure something out by now. Kids like to you know, fixate on something. Gives them something to focus on. I was talking with him the other day. I'm willing to bet it was about fish. It was. Knew it. But I managed to steer the conversation. And he actually listened. You got him to talk about something other than a fish? Yep. How? <laughs> well, I humoured him to start with. Talking about fish, but... Then I started to talk about something I wanted to talk about, and eventually he forgot about them entirely, and just listened to me. What did you want to talk about? Ancient gods. Oh. He said he preferred Greek gods. Oh. I was young and stupid. I know it's cliche, but still, it's true. I was on holiday in Crete with some friends and it was beautiful. And I was stupid. We got drunk and decided to go swimming. Yes, I told you stupid, but still. It was the happiest I'd ever been. I was strangely comfy. It felt like I was falling asleep. I dug my head under the water to try and shake me awake, but as soon as I put my head under, I was on the seafloor. I looked up and the surface seemed miles away. The seabed was 
beautiful. The silky gold sand and the fish. The fish were magical. And when I met him, he was frightening. But in an attractive way, if that makes sense, like the danger made it exciting. It was one night. My parents always said it takes one night and one bad decision to ruin your life. I hate to say it. But they were right. Do you really think Eddie ruined your life? What? No, no, I love Eddie. I, I just regret him. Why did it have to be him? Well, if it wasn't him, he wouldn't be Eddie. Well, I feel like I'm saying this a bit more as of late, but what's booking you today? Come on, it's Eddie's birthday. You should at least try and seem happy. It's nothing. Just that I'm a terrible mother, and I'm waiting for the day that Eddie realises it and decides to hate me. Why would Eddie ever hate you? Today's about the fourth time this year you've been dragged along by him to Deep Sea World. You bought him his own little aquarium, for goodness sake. You do so much for him, June. It's not about what I've done for him. It's about what I didn't do. This is about that birthday message in the underwater tunnel, isn't it? Of course it is. Happy seventh birthday, Jamie. Why don't I even know that you could do that? Yeah, I, I, I'll tell you why, because I'm a crap mother. There, I said it. In all honesty, June, he's 14 years old. I think he's a little old for signs like that anyway. Well, I didn't want to get any uh, fish from our chips because it just felt long after seeing all those beautiful ones at the aquarium. But I'm sure they'll be just as good without Plenty of vinegar on yours, Mum. Just how you like it. Thank you, Eddie. What should we call the baby when she's warm? Shut your mouth when you eat, Eddie. I don't want to see that. I'm just going to pop for a cig. Don't want to smoke near the baby. What did my dad look like? I don't remember his face. He, he wasn't a great man. It's all right, Mum. You don't need to tell me. The walls have always been thin in our house, and even if I hadn't heard, the silver carp told me. I think I always knew I was a little different. What? The silver carp? Everything's going to be all right, Mum. Trust me. 